Hi, I'm Barbara, and I am a German living in British Columbia, Canada for the last 27 years. My husband is Canadian, and together we raised a beautiful family here on the West Coast. I call myself lucky to have two homes on two continents, and fortunately, I get to travel back to Germany often. My channel Ausgewandert covers mostly German videos about the wide open spaces in Canada. This time, I'd like to mix it up a bit and tell you about my nation's capital. If you are visiting Berlin for the first time, here are my top 10 must-sees of this multicultural and modern city with plenty of history. Berlin, Germany's old and new capital, is a federal state and the largest city today, with a population of 3.7 million people on an area of 891 square kilometers. In bustling Berlin, one can easily miss the inconspicuous parallel rows of cobblestones that cut across city streets, sidewalks and plazas. They mark where the Berlin Wall once stood. On November 9, 1989, when the wall came down or the Iron Curtain fell, I was 20 years old living in Düsseldorf. Back then, Germany joyfully celebrated the border opening and even louder were the calls in Berlin for unification. The wall was built by the SED the state party of the GDR in 1961 to halt the mass exodus from east to west. In the early hours of August 13th that year, a barbed wire fence was erected around West Berlin and the building of the wall commences two days later. The wall transformed the lives of so many people for 28 long years. The Brandenburg Gate is one of the most iconic sites in today's vibrant Berlin facing the Pariser Platz. By the end of the Second World War, the buildings around the historical square were in ruins and reconstructed only after the reunification in 1990. Buildings now include elegant townhouses, embassies and the impressive luxury five-star Hotel Adlon. The square is a popular site to take in the Berlin feeling, with street musicians and German history. The gate was built in 1788 to 1791, inspired by the monumental gateway at the entrance to the Acropolis in Athens. In 1793, the gate was crowned by the Quadriga statue, which faces towards the east. Today, the Brandenburg Gate symbolizes more than any other landmark in Berlin, the reunited Germany. With the post-war division of the city, the Brandenburg Gate was in the Soviet sector. When the Berlin Wall went up, the gate stood in an exclusion zone in the Arc of the Wall, inaccessible for locals and visitors alike. Walking freely through the gate is mandatory during your visit as it was not always possible to do so. If you walk from the Brandenburg Tor straight down the road, you see the winged sculpture, the goddess Victoria, on top of the 69 meter high Siegessäule in the distance, colloquially referred to as Gold Else or Golden Lizzie. The monument is meant to commemorate Germany's victories against Denmark, Austria and France between 1864 and 1871. Today, most people associate the victory column with the raves and parties of the Love Parade Festival. The column is also known as a lookout point and is one of the stops on the hop-on, hop-off bus route. Just a stone throw away from the Brandenburg Tor is the German Reichstag located. I highly recommend a visit to the Glass Dome, from where you have fantastic panorama views. It is free of charge, but advanced registration is required. 
If you can't get tickets online, go to the Little Shark across the street. Here you can book time slots to visit the dome for the next day or two. Bring your photo ID, as your name will be submitted for a police check before entering the Reichstag. The self-guided tour in a language of your choice explains about the many buildings and sites you get to see from up here. Pre-registration can also get you inside the plenary chamber. Not the floor, of course, but the visitor's gallery. The Platz der Republik in front of the Reichstag building covers a grass area of 37,000 square meters. This is where the reunification ceremony took place on October 3rd, 1990. The Spree River runs straight through the city center. Therefore, a boat tour not only gets you close up to many main attractions, like the government district or Berlin's beach, but the guided tour also offers information about buildings and history. Von britischen Architekten Norman Foster entworfen, dient die markante Kuppel des Reichstags als Aussichtsplattform sowie der Belichtung und Entlüftung des darunter gelegenen Plenars. There are a lot of bridges in Berlin. Some say up to 2,000 with many architectural styles from ancient to modern. The monumental Berlin Cathedral with its magnificent dome is one of the many landmarks in the cityscape. It is a burial place of the Hohenzollern and serves today as a parish for the Protestant community. The Red Town Hall has been the seat of the governing mayor of Berlin since 1991. To the right are the twin towers of the Nikolaikirche, the oldest church in Berlin. The House of World Cultures, formerly the Congress Hall, was a gift from the US government. It is jokingly known as a pregnant oyster. Museum Island is a unique ensemble of five museums and the entire complex is listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Friedrichstraße Station is another landmark you'll pass on your boat tour. The station opened in 1882 and served as an intersection between East and West while Berlin was divided. The glass building next to it is named Palace of Tears a site of longing, anger, despair, hope and fear. The former customs clearance hall served the GDR dictatorship as a place for processing those leaving the GDR for West Berlin. The atmosphere inside was dominated by Czechs and the added fear that permission to leave was arbitrarily denied at the last moment. Around the corner is the now famous Friedrichstraße border crossing, widely known as Checkpoint Charlie. It is a reminder of the conflict between the powers during the Cold War and the partition of Berlin. It became one of the most famous inner city border crossings, but also witnessed numerous attempts to escape from East Berlin. The name Checkpoint Charlie comes from the NATO phonetic alphabet. After the border crossing at Helmstedt Marienborn, Alpha, and Dreilinden Drewitz, Bravo, the Friedrichstraße crossing was the third checkpoint, Charlie, opened by the Allies in and around Berlin. Alexanderplatz is one of the liveliest squares in Berlin, and certainly the biggest, with shops, cinemas, restaurants and many attractions within walking distance. It is an important transport junction for S-Bahn, U-Bahn, regional trains, trams and buses and yet converted to a pedestrian zone. East Germany has long been history, but the iconic TV tower on Alexanderplatz is still drawing in the crowds. Built during the years of the GDR, it was evidence that the GDR was building a better future, emblematic of the communist system's superiority. It has now become the symbol for Berlin, nationally and internationally. Soaring 368 meters into the sky, it is the city's most visible landmark, plus 
Europe's highest building open to the general public. No visit to Berlin is complete without a trip to the Hackische Höfe, just around the corner from the TV tower. This is where the locals hang out, here in between the street vendors, shops and restaurants. In the 17th century, this wasn't even part of Berlin. There were lots of barns there for storing hay and straw, which couldn't be kept in the city because of the fire risk. Although the area around Hackischer Markt has long since been part of the city center, it is still called Scheunenviertel or Barn Quarter today. Last but not least, I'd like to take you to the other side of town, the Kurfürstendamm, Berlin's legendary shopping boulevard. The three and a half kilometer boulevard takes you from Kaiser Wilhelm Memorial Church to the residential area of the Grünewald Villas. The most famous department store in the country is the KDW, Department Store of the West, located just off of this boulevard. With 60,000 square meters of sales floor, it is the largest department store on the European continent. The Kaiser Wilhelm Memorial Church on Kurfürstendamm is a striking landmark and a memorial against war and destruction. The traffic roars and people hurry by. Berlin is bursting with life outside. But as soon as you enter this church, it is silence all around. It is safe to say there is a little something for everyone in this one-of-a-kind city. Enjoy your trip to Berlin, whether it's virtually or in person. And thanks for watching.